What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Universe Sports Talk. I'm your host, Jackson Payne. You can follow me on Twitter at Jackson5Payne, and make sure to follow us at Daily Univ Sports on Twitter and Instagram. Here with BYU women's basketball head coach, Amber Whiting, to tell us about what it's been like to be here at BYU this summer so far, just the, the adjustment between high school and college, your observations being around the girls. Just tell us about your experience. I have got to know the girls a lot this summer, and just to see who can do what things and push them in ways that they weren't used to being pushed before um, and just see the growth in them. And just not necessarily that anything was like different, but just change is different, right? And you got to be able to do different drills and do different things. And so it's been fun to get to know them um, on one-on-one -on -one basis or in a group setting and see them compete and practice. That's been my main thing to see them every single day, give 110%. And so, yeah, we've had a lot of fun this summer, but there's been, um, a lot of hard work and that's what I've been most impressed by my girls and I call my girls because they are mine now um, but most impressed by their hard work and the way that they conduct themselves on the court they hold each other accountable and I love that they already have that instilled in them and I'm just hoping to build upon that. So obviously from last year they went 26 and 4 with coach Judkins it's kind of a, a transition clearly with the new coaching staff tell me about do you feel any pressure coming into BYU after such a great year last year? Do you feel any pressure? Does that kind of challenge you to be better? And I would be lying if I said there was no pressure, right? They had an amazing season, probably the best one in um, I don't know how long. But um, losing those four seniors and losing Shaylee, it makes it so there's a lot of big shoes to fill. Um, but the thing that's most, um, for me, just like that I'm ready to see and take on is I see the hunger in those younger girls' eyes they want those extra minutes that are there to have, right? They want those extra shots. They want those extra points. They want to be able to do things and step into those shoes. And that's the most exciting thing for me. And so I just want to see what we can do. I don't ever want to call it a rebuilding year because it's not that, right? We're in the WCC. I want to attack it with everything. I want to try and win it. I want to try and do what we at BYU are expected to do, right? And we win in the right way, right? right? So. Um, that's the way that's the way I'm approaching it and I don't I want my girls to be fearless in all of it like not looking at like uh, scared or have anxiety with it I want to teach them to have the mindset to attack life to attack the game to attack every situation that they're in um, and hopefully they take that and it makes them successful this year I like that obviously BYU runs the WCC in women's basketball <laughs> uh, historically so it'll be great to see us pick up where we left off this past year. But uh, one thing that you said in your introductory press conference that I've thought about a lot since then, it was kind of the moment where, obviously, I mean, I'm, we're reporters, you don't have to win us over, but as a BYU fan, it won me over from the press conference was when you said something along the lines of, I want refs to be uncomfortable refing us because of our defense, and I want teams to hate playing us because of our defense. Talking about just being a defense first coach. Uh, tell me about just your defensive philosophy. Tell me about just what defense means to you and, and your program. All my practice plans, all of them, and the girls are realizing this for me. Um, the first half is always defense. And if they don't give me that energy and effort in a drill, I'll run it back. Like, and at first they were like, what? And I'm like, no, like if we will be here all day doing this drill until we do it right, right? And so like, um, they're learning defensive principles that I rely on. They're learning how I expect the intensity to be. Um, I want them to, defense is not, they have to be in control, right? So they're turning the ball over. They're making sure the defense, or the ball handler is going where they want to go. Um, boxing out. I mean, it's all energy and effort on defense. And so there is a talent to it, but there also is just a lot of hard work. Anybody can play it if they want to, right? And so when you go in a gym, do you ever go in a gym and work on defense? Like that's not existent, right? So like for me, I feel like defense will win championships. Defense, when you go in an arena at Gonzaga, at you know Baylor, wherever we go, if we're not having a good shooting night, defense is gonna create offense for us. And so you can turn over the ball, you can get some easy ones in transition, you can do a lot of things from your defense. And I feel like it helps create your offense, it helps win, it wins championships. So if we don't have defense, like you're never going to outscore the opponent. You've got to defend them. You've got to be able to shut them down. And so for me, I feel like it's a pride thing. And that's where I come from the mindset as defense is a pride thing. Like I, in practice, um, we have certain drills that offense doesn't count. Like when you score, it doesn't count. But you can get, you know, points for your team if you get defensive rebounds, offensive rebounds, or a charge is five points, right? Like it's like I emphasize that a lot so that they understand how much it means to me. Um, yeah, so intricacies of our team, like there's some things I haven't even introduced to them yet that will be things in the locker room that make it so 
they want to play defense, right? And it's a challenging, it's competitive. And so, yeah, that's where I come from about from defense. It fires me up, if you can't tell. I mean, defense wins championships. That's uh, it's, it's one of the great just cliches of sports, right? I feel like personally, like when watching basketball, all, great offenses make great teams, but great defenses make great programs, you know? Like you look at the San Antonio Spurs, what they did for years and years and years in the NBA, like the foundation of that was defense. And the foundation of what Coach Judkins had done before was, was defense. And uh, establishing that defensive excellence early is, is so important. So I love that. I love that the charge is five points. That's uh, <laughs> Talking about this transition a little bit more, you put together your new staff. Um, obviously, Lee Kamard was retained from the last staff, but bringing on Morgan Bailey and Aaron Kalhoff. Uh, tell me about the process and bringing in some new assistants and, and trying to find that perfect staff for your first year in Provo. I feel like we're all different. And so my main goal with hiring my staff in my head, I wanted different people that did different things, right? So Aaron comes from a completely different side of the country. And so me uh, reaching recruits that way or being able to bring the power five mindset of offense and defense, whatever, right, that he brings is completely different than say what Lee brings or that what Morgan brings, right? And so even like I just hired my video and strategy guy, Josh Edwards from CSI, and he brings a whole different side of knowing like what JUCO is out there and knowing how, how to like, I don't know, navigate that area of the world because the tra por portal, everything's, you know, it's all changing. And so I wanted a different aspect from every single person that I hired and I feel like I got that. Um, now coming together as a team, I mean, we, we're as a staff, we hash it out in the war room, we call it, right? And so we, we do that and it's, it's so crazy to see the different mindsets, but coming together as one is the most challenging part. And I think that as of right now, we're doing a pretty good job of it. That, I, 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 Aaron is a great Twitter follow. <laughs> his, uh, his motivational just yeah. tweets that he puts out, they just get me fired up every morning. Uh, it seems like he's hard at work on the recruiting trail. But uh, you played at BYU, obviously. Mm -hmm. Tell me just how it feels to be an alumna of BYU, of the BYU women's basketball program, and to come back and coach at your alma mater. BYU is always a special place, right, for me and my heart and my family. And I always wanted my kids to play here, um, brainwash them from when they were little, like all the camps and whatnot that you bring them to. Um, but BYU is just different. I don't think there's any school in the country that you can go to and feel what you feel when you get on campus. And so for me, um, just doing what I, what my dream, doing my dream here is like, it's like surreal. It's an unreal opportunity. And I just want to work as hard as I possibly can to make the best of everything here and to make BYU and Cougar Nation proud. So you talked about your kids, obviously everyone knows you brought Amari to BYU from Oregon. Did a little whining and dining at the dinner table, I guess, on the recruiting trail. Tell, tell me about the experience of recruiting your daughter to come play for your program. How is that different from dealing with any other recruit? Her and I have a different, I've coached her since she's been little, on the, in high school, on the AAU circuit, everything. Um, so her and I have a different relationship. We check our relationship at the door, kind of, the mom-daughter thing, right? She calls, I won't let her call me mom in practice. It's Amber. I treat her, I, you know, she knows with me, she's got to earn every last bit way more than the next player. And I just, I just didn't like that. I'm harder on her. Um, but when I got the job and going through the process, sorry, I might get emotional. She, uh, her and I sat down and had a talk because she'd already committed to Oregon. And the reason she didn't commit to BYU at first was because they weren't power five and she wanted to play that. And so that was really important to her. Um, but Kelly and their staff there, um, loved her like their own. And so I was fine with her, but doing that. Um, but when we sat down, I w applied for the job. I just, we talked through it and I said, you know, this is my dream. It's not your dream. Like we are not a package deal. So don't th feel like you have to do this with me, you know? And at first she was okay with it. And then when, you know, social media, it has its goods and bads, but I just remember one of my friends, um, that's out on the circuit with her. She told me that Amari had actually said, I don't want my mom to go in that fight by herself. Like she's a fighter and she knows going into the big 12, it's going to be a dog fight. And she just, then it's hard to, it's hard to, sorry. It started to kind of be like, wait, are you ever going to get to see me play? You know? And I said, this was our decision. This was what the big girl decisions were, right? Like I probably won't get to see you play, but I can watch on TV or I could get synergy, you know, like there's other ways to watch you play, not in person. And so she kind of started to realize like being in front of in front of family and friends was more important and then she always i mean byu was her dream school when she was little you know and so that for her it was like when we moved here and she started to get settled and started to see how 
easy it is to just integrate and how, I mean, it just felt like home to her, right? And so she started started to change her mindset and she just came to me one day and she just was, said, I want to rethink this. And I said, look, I can recruit you, <laughs> but you got to be able, like, it's going to be, there's going to be good days, there's going to be bad days. There's going to be arrows at you no matter what you decide. So you can't make anyone happy. You have to do what's best for yourself. And so I didn't push her because I know her personality and I know if you back her in a corner, she's just going to come out swinging, right? So I just let her go through the process and she had a lot of talks with her dad through it because I'm on the BYU side and I want her, right? But she's got to talk through it with Trent and see what's best for her. And um, after me not coaching her out on the circuit and being recruiting and not being at her games, and not, she just realized like this is, this is the most funnest thing ever, right? To be able to play for your mom, do this with your mom. And, and I, you only get four years of college, and so you want to make the most of it. And so I just, I'm really happy that she decided to come. Um, I know there's going to be a lot of hard work ahead. I know that we're going to take a lot of whatever you want to call it, negativity, but there's going to be a lot of positive things. And I hope that people give her the opportunity to just see her for a player, disconnect from me. Does that make sense? Like, because I'm going to make her earn any second she gets on the court, right? So just let her let her shine for herself because that's who she is and she's a heck of a player and heck of a defensive player that's where she's always, she wins me over with that but yeah so I just I just really hope that I hope that it was I know it was a good decision for her and when she made the decision I saw a change in her countenance I saw a weight lifted off her shoulders and it's been really really good at home and yeah, I just I couldn't be more excited about it. That's awesome. Amari Whiting, all in for BYU, all in for the Big 12. That's that's what we love to hear, right? Yeah. I mean, we were all waiting for it, so I'm glad it, glad it finally happened. Yeah, she chose right. <laughs> <laughs> she chose the right, you know? They, they tell you to CTR from the time you're a kid and when you're growing up, and it looks like Amari did that. Obviously, your family is a great basketball family. The, the stock is rising for the Whiting family as, as one of America's best basketball families, I'd say. Uh, you and your husband played in college. Jace is at Boise State. Amari's coming to BYU. Yeah, give us the scouting report of the Whiting family. Oh, wow. I will get in so much trouble. Um, there's a group. <laughs> there's a group chat that we have. And I, they, it, I mean, there's so much trash talk, right? And so we went to Hawaii. And I'll just throw this out there. Um, our first family vacation together, because my son was on a mission, for the last two years and he was a COVID senior so we haven't had that family vacation in a long time and so we went just last week and <laughs> we can't not go on vacation and go play basketball right so they found some outdoor courts and we're there playing and they were playing this game five spot who had made the most and so Jace went and I can't remember what he got and Mari went and so I think they were tied four for five or whatever well, Trent hadn't shot yet and so he kind of got up and walked out there he went five for five and he just like I just walked away and he never let them like he I mean lived in that glory for the rest of the trip and they all were <laughs> so mad at him and talking trash and every night had to be restarted again and every night we went home somebody was mad and so it's about how it goes in my family right um but there's they both they all have their different aspects of their game and they all play very similar and so to compare them it's really hard but yeah they all like to challenge each other, I will say, but at the end of the day, I'm the boss. <laughs> Just kidding. No, we, uh, Trent took over. I'll tell this funny story. Trent took over for me and uh, playing on the Adidas thing. And there was a team that went on a run like 8 0, and then they hit another three. It was like 11 0. And then I just was sitting there kind of watching it, and I was getting, I could just feel my heat rising. And so Amari calls me after. She's like, Mom. I was like, I know. And she's like, I just, there was a point in time I knew you would have taken a time out and just chewed our butts. And dad didn't. She's like, this is different. And I'm like, don't get used to it. Like Trent's like one that he's going to outscore the team. And I'm like, no, like we're, does that make sense? So it's, we even have those aspects at home where we're just, we kind of have different coaching philosophies too. So we're, we're on the topic of basketball just in general. What, who do you watch? When the TV's on and you're watching basketball, are you watching a lot of college or watching NBA? Like who, are there any players that you follow? I love watching college. And then NBA when it hits the playoffs, because then I feel like they crank it up, right? And up until then, it's kind of like chill. Not chill, but you know what I'm saying? But college is like, I love the intricacies and the strategies. And um, Coach K and Duke, they're one of my favorite teams ever of all time. And that was one of my bucket list things is to go to a game in Cameron Indoor. So my husband actually got that done a couple years ago for us and surprised us at Christmas. And that, um, I just, I love watching their teams per se and how he does things um 
But I'll pick different. I mean, when you scroll on Twitter and you see, you know, certain plays of certain teams and it like, I always save that. And, you know, you're just picking things apart or picking things to add to your repertoire all the time. Right. Um, I love coaching philosophies and there's a couple of coaches that I follow um, that I always listen to just because they have really sound minds and really um, talk about things that you want incorporated in your team's culture. And so I look to I look at that a lot, but I love watching college basketball and specifically um, ooh, teams. I mean, BYU's team last year was really, really good. That was one of my, that was a fun team to watch. Um, but yeah, I, just, I really like watching college. That's my number one. So we had Coach Kamard, Coach Lee, on our show a few months ago when he was telling us about when the team last year met Charles Barkley at the airport. Uh, I don't know if you've heard that story yet, but uh, it, was, it was really cool for Lee because that was like his favorite player growing up, and so he meets Charles Barkley. So who is your... Who is the most famous or most memorable basketball player that you've met in your life? I have a really good relationship with Jason the Jet Terry, right? He just yeah. got the Jazz assistant job. And so him and I were texting the other day. We're going to go out to dinner next week um, as our, well, his family's not here yet, but my family and him, right? And so we actually met him a couple years ago when we were in Florida doing something. Um, and him and my husband were roommates at a camp in high school like a long time ago. So I've always, I mean, when you meet somebody and, you know, and they play in the NBA, you just kind of follow them, right? So I love him and how he plays. And so I got to actually coach against him the, on Adidas, right? And so, and he's always, his teams always play super hard. They're very aggressive. They're very defensive oriented. And so him and I always have some good battles when it comes down to it. Um, but just knowing him and being able to pick his brain through stuff. And now that he's right down the street the, at the Jazz, that's awesome for him, right? Yeah. Um, and just being able to connect with him more often now is going to be awesome. What do you want to accomplish this year that will define a successful season for your inaugural campaign here in Provo? Win the WCC. Like, <laughs> I mean, that's just like, that's what we want, right? Like, that's your goal. Um, short term, I always want the girls to one game at a time. And I, I, you know, to instill like a lot of my mental aspects of how I approach the game in them so that we become more coherent as a team. Um, I love player-led teams, so to be able to have you know, some natural leaders rise. Um, but I want to have this year be a huge growth year and have a lot of success so that next year going into the Big 12, you have that momentum. Um, so getting to the NCAA tournament, that's another goal. Like I feel like this group, I mean, they all want it, right? They got there last year, and they have, there's very few that have experience, right? And so all those girls are hungry for that. And so it would give me no greater joy than to help them achieve those goals. March is a great month to go dancing, so <laughs> March Madness, let's, let's get it. This is part of the show, we do some rapid fire non-basketball questions. Just real quick to kind of get to know Amber Whiting, the person, not just the coach. What was the last movie that you saw in the theater? I'm Top Gun. I took my girls to it okay. and we went and watched it and some of them cried. I won't name who. So are you, are you more of a fan of the new Top Gun or the original? Is that, w which one was better in your opinion? I'm an old school fan. I like yeah. the old one for sure. Miles Teller just didn't do it for her. So <laughs> no, new Top Gun was great. That was the last movie I saw as well. What's your pregame playlist look like? What are you listening to before a game? Crazy, but right before, I have to have chill music. Like I have to be in that. So it slows everything down for me in my head. It's not like rushed, right? Um, and so I always, I have a certain playlist I have on my phone, it's just chill, so I'll just put that in before games so that I calm myself, and so that when it comes game time, it's go time, but I'm in a calm, emotional state. We had Samson Nakua from the football team on our show last year, and he was telling us that he listens to like poetry on YouTube before a game to like kind of get in the zone, like get mellow. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I've never heard of like a football player listening to poetry. Like I don't, before a game, like I'm, I'm, I'm cranking like my metal, like my hard rock, like I'm going as hard as I can. Mm -hmm. But I, I get some people have to be a little bit mellow. But if, if, if Coach is on the aux, what, what is Coach playing? I like the old school, like, R&B stuff. And so that's what I usually, and the girls are always like, what? But they actually know a lot of it now, so it's kind of cool. It's kind of mm -hmm. fun. And stupid. It sounds stupid. I love, like, Eminem, Snoop Dogg, like, yeah. like way back. <laughs> Um, yes, yes. Drake, the girls that at least like that I know him, so I put him on sometimes. It's great. I mean, as long as, as, long as the girls can appreciate the, the classics, you know, Eminem, Snoop Dogg, that's what matters most. When basketball is not on your TV, what, what is the Whiting family watching? Do you guys watch shows together? Do you watch shows by yourself? Is there any TV that you guys watch and enjoy? It's mainly sports, to be honest with you. Like, we don't have a whole lot of time where we gather around the TV. Um, occasionally, we'll have family movie nights of just any new releases that have came out, and so we'll just you know, maybe a Sunday night or whatever, but it's mostly just sports. 
Like that's disappointing, I know, but that's all we watch. What other sports do you guys watch? Um, football is on a lot. Uh, sometimes baseball. I like watching college softball. Like that's yeah. fun for me to watch. And then, what is your favorite movie all time? All time favorite movie? I love Hoosiers. Is that okay, yeah, does that no. sound dumb? Like I, that? I love that movie. I love how they can take like a small town and take it and make it big. And it's just the lessons that that coach teaches in there. That's awesome for me. So I love that. Coach, thanks so much for coming on the show. Is there anything else that you want to let the fans know? Anything that you want to let us know about the team? I just want you guys to come out and support us. Like we, there's something about a six man and people in the stands that helps our girls. And I know that that electricity, that Cougar Nation brings it. Um, so yes, come out, watch these girls there, support them, get to know them. Um, that's, the main thing and see their hard work pay off. That's what I'm excited. So yes, come out with support, please. Go Cougs. Amber Whiting, head coach, BYU Women's Basketball. One of the most energetic, one of the most fun teams to watch on campus. Tons of fun last year, going into a new era with, with the new coaching staff. A lot of great headlines and storylines coming out for this coming season. So come out and support the Cougs. Follow us at Daily Unif Sports on Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.